Hi, this is the how-to video for the safety information hunt. In the following videos, I'll demonstrate how to find and use a variety of information resources, some free, some only available here at Duke. These resources index and organize chemical data and safety information. You will use these resources for not only this assignment, but also for the rest of your life in any lab. You can come back to this video at any time for a refresher on how to find something or in case you are planning on using the next half hour to take a nap. Part 1. Why learn how to find safety information? We know the real reason most of us are taking chemistry. We like to blow things up. If you want to do that, however, it is best to be safe about it. Knowing the safety facts about chemical compounds can be the difference between a cool explosion and a dangerous one. Knowing how to find and use safety information on the chemicals you use in the lab is also required by law. The chemistry department is responsible for making sure you know how to find and interpret safety information about the chemicals you use. This leads us to the related topic of knowing the hazards involved in using chemical compounds. Being prepared and aware of the possible hazards will help you and your lab mates, not to mention your TA and various other people, feel safe. If it's not dangerous, you're not doing chemistry. You may not believe it now, but all of the resources and techniques I'll demonstrate will ultimately save you time. College students don't have much time. If you don't know that already, you soon will. Learning how to save time is a very good reason to pay attention, so wake up! Learning facts about chemical compounds before you go into the lab will not only save you time, but will make you a better chemist. It is a proven fact that the scientists who get the big grants and prizes, such as the Nobel Prize, know how to use and search the literature efficiently. For as long as you do research in a lab, you will use the information finding skills you learned from this assignment. For the rest of the semester, you will use the resources from this safety information hunt to find physical constants of chemical compounds for your lab assignments. Published chemical property information is considered factual. For example, the boiling point of water is a known fact. Why not save time finding the value in the literature instead of waiting for a pot to boil? With the completion of this assignment, you will know how to find relevant material safety data sheets, MSDSs, for chemical compounds. Correctly distinguish between personal protections and precautions on an MSDS. Compare and contrast MSDSs from two different manufacturers. Find accurate general information about a compound including synonyms, chemical formula, a chemical's common uses, the CAS registry number, and you'll know how to accurately judge the dependability of internet resources. To teach you about these resources, I'll talk about them and then I'll demonstrate how to use them to look for safety and chemical compound information. Don't forget to read your lab manual closely for this assignment and all your other labs to come. This concludes part one. At this point, you ought to know why we have the safety information hunt. Safety information hunt part two. What is a material safety data sheet? MSDSs, or material safety data sheets, are documents that spell out safety and hazard information for chemical compounds. They are meant to be used by workers and emergency personnel and are not intended for consumers. When you are in the lab for general chemistry, you are considered to be working with chemical compounds. That's one reason you need to know about MSDSs. The U.S. government requires all companies that manufacture or sell chemical compounds to send MSDSs with those compounds. So every lab on campus that buys and uses chemicals also receives from the company an MSDS or instructions on how to access the MSDS online. As we have already learned, using chemicals is dangerous. Even the ancient Egyptians knew this. The first known incident of written safety information was found in ancient Egyptian ruins. OSHA, or the Occupational Health and Safety Administration, requires nine unique sections on MSDSs. Other agencies also have regulations for MSDSs, like the EPA. Here are those nine required sections. All MSDSs have to identify the chemicals in the compound, including their CAS registry numbers, the name and address of the manufacturer, the identities of the hazardous ingredients, a handy section spelling out basic physical and chemical characteristics of the compound, how the chemical reacts in a fire or an explosion, how it reacts under various conditions, 
description of its ha health hazards, and precautionary actions you must take when using this chemical, especially for handling or storage of the compound, and what safety measures you need to take to protect yourself and others, such as gloves, safety glasses, and more. Some manufacturers have additional sections on their MSDSs. Two more things to think about when using MSDSs, the Hazard Diamond and Toxicology abbreviations. The Hazard Diamond was created by the National Fire Protection Association, NFPA, to aid in the quick recognition of hazards of chemical compounds. You have probably seen the diamond shape before. The diamond is broken into four sections. Numbers in the three colored sections range from zero, least severe hazard, to four, most severe hazard. The fourth white section is left blank and is only used to denote special firefighting measures or hazards. Blue is the health section, red is for flammability, and yellow is for instability. You can find more detailed information on the hazard diamond from the link to a page on the resource guide under Material Safety Data Sheets. The IUPAC has created a list of all toxicological abbreviations that you may encounter in not only safety information but also in the literature. There is a link to this web page on the resource guide under Material Safety Data Sheets. You will encounter these abbreviations frequently when, when receiving MSDSs. The Interactive Learning Paradigms Incorporated has a terrific FAQ on the web that has lots more information about MSDSs. This concludes Part 2 of the Safety Information Hunt. Safety Information Hunt Part 3 Using MSDSs Protection versus Precaution You will need to identify protections and precautions for your chemical compound. It is good to know what is what. Protection is what a person needs to wear or have available to be protected from the harmful effects of a compound. Precautions are what you need to do to safely handle and store a compound. Protections include things like gloves, always wearing safety glasses, sometimes boots but always closed-toed shoes, a lab coat, make sure there is an eye wash found nearby and that you know where it is, you may need to have respirators on hand, and there are many others. Precautions are related to the handling and storage of a compound. A very common precaution is to store a compound in a cool, dry, well-ventilated ve location. To store and use it away from fire hazards. Don't use sparking tools in the presence of this compound. Containers of your material may be hazardous when empty. They may have vapors or residues still inside and there are many other possible precautions you may need to be aware of for different compounds. Please be safe. Be aware of the safety issues related to the compounds you will be working with. This concludes Part 3. Safety Information Hunt Part 4. Finding chemical information with the compound name, CAS registry number, or chemical formula. For this assignment, you will need to be able to find information about chemical compounds by looking for them in various ways. You can use the compound's name, the molecular formula, or something called the CAS registry number to find information about a compound. Chemical compounds are similar to gangsters and mobsters. They have a lot of names. There are common names, chemical names, uncommon names, product names, and more. Think of salt versus sodium chloride. For example, the compound toluene has at least 20 different names. Methylbenzene, methicide, a few more, and even more. The CAS registry number. This is quite possibly the single most useful thing to learn when searching for chemical information. Name and compounds can be tricky and inconsistent, so we needed something better. So let me digress for a moment. In about 1905, a group of chemists got together and started indexing and abstracting all the chemical information that chemists were producing. They created what is now the largest database of information in the world, chemical abstracts. In 1967, they realized that with all the names that a compound could have, they needed to create a system to easily find compounds. They created the CAS registry number system. That first year, they indexed over 110,000 unique compounds with unique numbers. So these are kind of like social security numbers for chemical compounds. The number of known chemical compounds is ever-increasing, 
More than 12,000 are added each day. As of January 9, 2010, there were 56.5 million unique registry numbers. Each number is unique, and most chemical information resources index compounds by the CAS registry number. This is extremely handy. The format is always a numeric identifier that can contain up to 10 digits divided by hyphens into three parts and often found enclosed in brackets. The first set of numbers can have multiple digits, while the second and thirds are two digits and one digit respectively. Here are some examples of compounds and their registry numbers. Molecular formulas can be the most difficult way to search for compounds because a single molecular formula can refer to several different chemicals. For example, toluene has the molecular formula of C7H8, but so do a lot of other chemicals, these two for example. You may need to use more than one resource to find compound information. You also may need to use more than one search method. Try a few of these search strategies and see what you like best. This is the end of part four. Part five of the safety information hunt. How to use ChemInfo to find chemical safety information. As with all of the resources for this assignment, you will need to start at the Chemistry Library Resources website, library.duke.edu slash chemistry. In the lower right of that page, under the course guides, click on CH31 Lab. ChemInfo is listed under Material Safety Data Sheets and Safety Information. ChemInfo is a subscription resource paid for by Duke's Occupational and Environmental Safety Office. It provides detailed profiles for over 1,500 workplace chemicals. These profiles include information that is on an MSDS, but also provides additional information. You can also search for MSDSs from this site by choosing the MSDS link from the menu on the left. Let's do a search for toluene. Sections 1 and 2 provide information about the identity of toluene and a description of the chemical and the industrial uses. Sections 7 and 8 provide information about the handling and storage precautions and the personal protection needed when handling the chemical. Take a look at the other sections too to see what else you can find out about your chemical. As with any of the safety information resources, your compound may not be in ChemInfo. Don't despair, try the next one. This ends part five. Safety Information Hunt Part 6 How to Use ChemSpider to Find Basic Chemical Information As with most of the resources for this assignment, you will need to start at the Chemistry Library Resources website, library.duke.edu slash chemistry. In the lower right of that page, under Course Guides, click on CH31 Lab. ChemSpider is listed under Basic Information. ChemSpider is a free website that aggregates, or brings together chemical information from all over the internet. It is a good source for information on many, but not all chemical compounds. Search ChemSpider from the main page. You can search by name or registry number. There are also many other ways that we won't talk about to search ChemSpider. I will do a search for toluene. ChemSpider provides you with the structure and the name at the top of the article. You can see that the Wikipedia article is also brought in. The section that you might find most useful for this assignment is the properties section. It's found right underneath the identifier section where you will find different names. In the properties section, keep in mind you will need to choose the experimental properties tab instead of the predicted properties. The predicted properties are calculated using software and isn't always accurate. As with any of the safety information resources in this assignment, your compound may not be in ChemSpider. Don't despair, try the next one. This ends part six. Part seven, how to use the NIST chemistry webbook to find basic chemical information. As with most of the resources for this assignment, you will need to start at the Chemistry Library Resources website, library.duke.edu chemistry. 
In the lower right of that page, under Course Guides, click CH31 Lab. The NIST Chemistry Webbook is listed under Basics. The webbook is a free database of chemical information. NIST stands for the National Institute of Science and Technology. This government organization creates and hosts a variety of scientific databases. The NIST Chemistry Webbook is just one of many. The Chemistry Webbook offers a variety of ways to search for basic information about a number of chemical compounds. You can search by name, formula, even the CAS registry number. For this search, let's use the CAS registry number for toluene. 108-88-3. The NIST Chemistry Webbook entries are clear and organized. At the top, we find the chemical formula, the molecular weight, the CAS registry number, and a very simple structure drawing. Within the NIST Chemistry Webbook, under the Other Data Available section, there are links to a large variety of data. Of these especially, the thermochemistry data may come in handy for a later lab. As with any of the other Safety Information Hunt resources, your compound may not be in the NIST Chemistry Webbook. Don't despair, just try the next one on the list. This concludes Part 7. Safety Information Hunt Part 8 – How to Use the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics to Find Basic Chemical Information From the Chemistry Library Resources website, library.duke.edu slash chemistry, go to the lower right of the screen under the Course Guide section and click on CH31 Lab. The CRC is listed under Basics. The CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics is an electronic version of a print reference book that indexes all kinds of useful data for chemistry and physics. You can find formulas, compound data, and much, much more in tables and tables of all sorts of useful stuff. This resource isn't always the easiest to use, but it is one of the most useful and important reference books in chemistry and has been a standard since 1913. I'm going to show you the fastest and easiest way to find basic chemical compound data. Since this is an electronic version of a print reference book, you will notice along the left side of the screen is a table of contents with links to content. This is not a very useful way to find stuff in the online CRC. Here's the best way. In the upper right hand of the page, under the search box, is a link to Structure Property Search. Click this link. There's that table of contents again on the left. Ignore it. The best and fastest way to search for a compound in this electronic CRC is using the CAS registry number. You can search by name, but as you may have noticed, your compound's name may be part of another compound's long and confusing name. Why not cut to the chase and use the CAS registry number? It's my favorite way to search. So to search for the entry on toluene, I will enter 108-88-3 into the CAS registry number search box in the handy form and click on the blue search button at the bottom of the form. Here's where it gets a little tricky. So what are these search results? It looks like this is a list of all the tables in the CRC where registry number 108-88-3 appears. We are interested in the physical properties or constants and there are two entries in that section. First a link to the whole section of physical constants of organic compounds and one under that called Interactive Table 1 Hit. The link to the Interactive Table 1 Hit is the one we want. If you click on the first link, you might as well order a pizza to be delivered as you wait for a giant 500 page PDF file to open on your computer. Instead, clicking on the Interactive Table 1 Hit will bring up the line with just the data for toluene, separating it from all the other organic compounds listed in the CRC. This Interactive Table is much easier to use. If you don't know what the column titles mean, just hover over them and it will tell you. As you can see, there is much of the same type of data we have seen in other resources – formula, structure, solubility, and so on. As with any of these resources, your compound may not be in the CRC. Try the next one on the list. This concludes Part 8. Safety Information Hunt Part 9 evaluating web resources, and closing. Always ask yourself the following questions. What is the scope of the web page? This question addresses what is covered on the site and whether it answers your question. Who is the intended audience? Is it kindergarten kids, 
the general public, academics? Who is the author? Was it a journalist, a scientist, a high schooler working on a project? Is there any potential bias? Do you think there is some kind of angle the author may want to push? When you are searching for information on the internet, try to answer these questions. Just because it is a .edu or .org site doesn't automatically ensure reliable information. And just because there might be a bias to the information doesn't mean you can't use it. You just need to think about these things and decide if the information is right for what you are doing. Remember, you can get the web version of the resource guide by going to the Duke Chemistry Library Resources website and clicking on the CH31 lab, bottom right hand of this page. This is the end of the instruction video for the safety information hunt. Don't forget you can return to this video and review any part you slept through. These videos were put together by Megan Gamsby, the chemistry librarian, based on work done by the previous chemistry librarian, Anne Langley. When I'm online, feel free to chat with me if you need any help finding chemical information. You can also stop by during my office hours and I'd be happy to help. Good luck on your assignment and remember, be safe.